Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com here at PIX 2015 on the expo floor. And from time to time, I'm gonna cut in with different things that we find around this show. Now we've got things from Samsung, Sony, Nikon, DJI, so many other awesome companies, and I'm gonna bring you all the fun toys. So let's go do that right now. Here we are in the Sony booth because Sony is absolutely crushing the mirrorless camera world. They are the number one sellers of mirrorless cameras right now. They have the A7 II, the A7R II, and the A7S II. Yes, no D2 mixed in there, but this lineup is fantastic. Even when you have an A6000, their mirrorless technology is starting to challenge the old conventional thinking that DSLRs are what pros are using. You're starting to see some pros switching over to mirrorless in certain situations. Now, what I think is going to happen in the next couple of years is that, that mirrorless technology and DSLR technology is going to merge in the middle and you're going to have the best of both worlds. But right now, Sony is absolutely crushing the industry industry in mirrorless technology. So right now I'm standing outside of a special thing in the Sony booth, which is to demonstrate the low light capabilities of not just still photography anymore, but also video. You can see how dark it is in here. Now I'm going to go in and close the curtain because what happens behind the curtain, only the Wizard of Oz actually knows. But what's going on right now is there's almost no light in this box. There is just a light at the distance reflecting off a black wall and you can see at 51,000 ISO that I look great on the screen. So not only are you going to be able to get low light, low light video, but low light stills as well. And Sony is absolutely crushing the market for creating sensors right now. Not only do they create sensors for themselves and for their own cameras, but they're the number one sensor maker in the world. They make the sensors for Nikon and many other camera manufacturers out there and, and also a lot of different mobile phones. So Sony is doing a fantastic job with low light capability because the higher you can bump your ISO and get cleaner files and footage, the happier you're gonna be. So my two minute penalty is over. I'm getting out of the box right now now. So one of the things you hear a lot uh, from photographers is that Sony doesn't have a lot of lens options. Well, they're starting to get there with the higher end glass for the pros, the 302 A's, the 70 to 202.8's, but they also have Zeiss optics in certain lenses that are extremely high quality, fast focusing, great in low light situation, great for portraits. And what's even better is that there's other companies out there that make adapters for the Sony cameras that allow you to adapt some Nikon lenses, some Canon lenses, so that you can have an all around versatile system and the one thing that I do want to see is I want to see more pro and glass from Sony but right now they're on the right path it just takes a little bit of time did you know that Sony has the world's fastest auto focusing camera it has four dimensions of, of autofocus who knew that 4d was even possible isn't that just a, a, a box or something but what's cool about this is that if you're new to photography and you don't know what you're doing for the most part, but you have kids that are running around or you have to capture fast objects and get them in tack sharp focus, you want to check out something like the Sony a6000 because it gives you the world's fastest autofocusing capability. Something like this. If I was to just roll this ball and we would just put it down there, the camera would be able to focus it. I feel like I'm playing Plinko and I just won. I just won at Plinko, $10,000. $10,000 Plinko winner right here. But you want fast autofocus. And the fact that they have a camera that is the world's fastest autofocusing camera, it could be perfect for you for whatever you're shooting. Here we are in the DP review booth, and one of the coolest things here is this little thing that showcases digital memory throughout the digital era. I absolutely love seeing an iOmega click disc, a 40 megabyte metal disc that you put into your camera that didn't take off. It didn't do well, but you can see the evolution right here. But even cooler, they have some older cameras that they put out here on display. Going back to, what's that say? 1995 with an older Casio camera. One of my favorite parts of DP Review's website 
are the archives. I love going back into the past to see different cameras that they were reviewing. I love looking back in 1995 to see what camera was the hottest thing there at 1.6 megapixels. Absolutely great stuff. So if you ever get a chance, check out the archives on DP Review. Now I'm sitting in the middle of a chess board. Now I know nothing about chess because I like to play checkers because it doesn't take as much brain power, but this is the Lens Rentals booth. They have so many items that you can rent and try out. It's like 87,000 items. So if there's a lens that you need or you want to test out before you purchase it, you want to check out LensRentals.com to find the lens. One of the cool things that they do have is that they're close to a FedEx facility, which means your shipping is a lot less expensive. But they have a keeper program, which I find to be the most interesting, because if you don't have a store near you to rent from, you can simply go to LensRentals.com, rent a lens, and then if you want to keep it within the first seven days, they'll refund your entire uh, rental, what, a rental fee? Rental fee. They'll, they'll, they'll give you back your rental fee and then charge you for the cost of the lens. That is a great way to try out gear. You try it, then you can buy it, and then you don't even have to pay for the rental at that, por at that point. So that's awesome. And if you're a frequent rental person, you can spend $79 and it's not going to cost you anything to do any of your rental shippings throughout the year. So that is fantastic. You want to pick up a lens, you want to try something out, it's affordable, it's fast, it's easy to use, so many different options, so many different choices. Check them out. Go to LensRentals.com. What am I holding right here in the Sigma booth? It's a telescope, you know. Arr! Look, it's Captain Jack Sparrow. Maybe not. But we're in the Sigma booth because they wanted to show this lens. Now this is the inside. This is, the, this is a metal guts of the guts. You remember that TV show? I used to watch it on Nickelodeon. But it was a 150 to 600 millimeter lens. People ask, is there really metal inside that lens? Well, this is showing you that the entire thing is made of metal. Look, it's made very well. The sport lenses are made extremely well. And over the past couple of years, Sigma has introduced a lot of different lenses in the contemporary, in the art, and in the sports lines of lenses that they're making. They're doing such a great job challenging the Nikons and the Canons of the world with lenses that may surpass the quality that they are creating but they're less expensive on the Sigma side. So you need to check them out. Check out Sigma for their full lineup of lenses over at their website. But I thought this was pretty cool just to see the guts of an actual 150 to 600 sports lens. It's pretty cool to see it. So how many people do you know with broken screens, broken something, broken phones, cameras, laptops? Who knows? There's a lot of broken things. But you can go to ifixit.com to check out different tutorial videos on how to fix whatever you have broken. In this case, we have a broken iPhone 5S screen. You can go to ifixit.com and for free, check out their tutorials for how to fix the screen. But then you can also purchase the screen from them along with tools that they have manufactured or designed themselves to make it easy for you to follow their tutorials on how to fix it. And you can go ahead and fix it yourself thus the eye fix it. So if there's something that you have broken, it doesn't just have to be a phone. It can be any of other things that they have on their website. Go to iFixit.com, check it out. This is a great option to save money and fix things on your own. Did you know Amazon offers software subscriptions? Well, I didn't know until about 12 seconds ago, but they do. Now you may be asking yourself, well, why would I want to get Lightroom or Photoshop from Amazon when I could just do it through Photoshop, uh, through Adobe.com. There's also a ton of other softwares that you can get subscriptions to on there, but it's simple. You already have your, your information on Amazon. You might as well do it in one place. So if you have to get five different subscriptions, you have to go to five different websites and put in five different credit card numbers and all of your information, it becomes a pain in the butt. So in this case, you can use one place just like this on Amazon. So I just invaded the Lexar booth because I want to share with you something I absolutely love. And this is the workflow. This is the HR2. Yep, the HR2. I have this on my desk at home. This is the Thunderbolt version so that you can daisy chain multiple Thunderbolt devices together. It also takes USB 3.0. But what makes this so cool is you get different types of card readers and put them all into this hub. You've got a micro SD, SD. You can get compact flash. You can get XQD. You can get CFast. You can even get modules that have 512 gigabytes of storage. But what's great about this, say you have 
two SD cards and two compact flash from a wedding, you can have them all downloading at the same time. So you don't have to put one card in and wait and put another card in and wait. You can do it all at once. But also, if you're traveling, you pop one out and you take it with you. This thing is absolutely incredible. Go check it out at Lexar's website. This is the HR2 and I love it. So this is the Zenmuse X5 from DJI that is a new payload for the DJI Inspire 1. So many people have been waiting for an option like this to come out and it is finally here. What is so good about it is it is a micro four thirds sensor that you can put your micro four thirds lenses on and then fly it with your Inspire 1. That gives you so much better quality because the larger the sensor, the better the quality is that you're gonna get. But what is so good about it is that it's a payload system that you connect to the DJI Inspire 1 by itself. You don't need to use somebody else's camera, somebody else's lenses and try to rig it up some other way. This just works. It's one system, there's two, there's the X5 and the X5R, and those are the two options that are there. You need to go check these things out, but I'm really excited to try this on a DJI Inspire 1. This is the DxO1 from DxO. I've been waiting to get my hands on this because they haven't sent it to me yet for whatever reason. I don't know why, but I am excited to finally get my hands on one because theoretically it's something that I would want to put in my pocket to carry around more so than just taking an iPhone picture. This is great in bright daylight. It's great if you're just taking snapshots. But if you're in lower light situations or you want to shoot raw with your iOS device, you need something like this. Now, being that it's a first generation model, there are some things that I hope that they change in the future, but everything that it offers me from shooting raw, they have the super raw, which uh, takes four images, puts them together. You use DxO software to, uh, they call it super raw. You know, there's things that are, that are interesting about it. I like the fact that it's this small and it's, and it's powerful and you have a one inch sensor. It doesn't actually mean one inches, but it's a one inch size sensor and this is what it does. You plug into your iOS device just like this and you're good to shoot. You shoot, you get your photos, you transmit right away. I, I, you know, I look at it and it's small and it's $599, a little expensive. It, it has to fall into a place that somebody really wants to carry this around in in supplement of their other cameras. Now I could see doing that because it fits in my pocket and it's gonna go with me when I leave here anyway. But check it out, go to DxO's website, look up the DxO1, see what it does and think about it. Would you like to have a better sensor inside of a mobile camera that you have that is that small? I would, now you need to go check it out. Woo! Instax Pink, taking my photo. Oh my God, is it a party Instax? Yes, it is. It's got a nice orangey McOrangensing thing. So anyway, I love the Instax and the Instax Mini. I have a couple of them at home. It seems to be one of the most popular things to take out to the bar when you're going there, because why just take a picture with a cell phone when you can walk up to a girl and take her picture with this and give it to her and then have her put her number on it maybe. But anyway, the Instax are a really cool thing to have. But the X-Series cameras that Fuji is putting out right now are absolutely fantastic. They have crushed the market tremendously with their X100T and, of course, the, a few of the other X-Series cameras. Uh, they're really popular for mirrorless cameras. They create amazing RAW files. They have some awesome firmware in there to create old-style looking uh, different film emulations so or emulsions. They look really good. So I love the Instax. This is something you should check out, but definitely check out all of the offerings that Fuji has on their website. I'm developing. Look at that right before your eyes. I'm developing and you don't even need to shake it. So this is the Samsung NX500. This is what people are getting when they're ditching their DSLR over here. Now what is interesting about this camera is it takes the guts of the NX1, which is an award-winning camera that DP Review has given three awards to, and it puts it into a much smaller form factor. You have the 28 megapixel sensor. Instead of 15 frames a second, you're doing nine frames a second. But the one thing that it doesn't have 
is a viewfinder. But for a lot of people that are running and gunning and doing 4K video, because we've heard that people love that this does 4K video, then you don't really need a viewfinder for that. So this NX500 is a pretty nice camera. Go check it out on Samsung's site to get all of the specs and details. So here we are in the Samsung booth with the NX1. Now this camera is about a year old, a little older than a year, and it's one of the most innovative cameras that we've seen in a long time. Now it's so innovative that DP Review gave it three awards last night at their awards ceremony. Now this is a fantastic and interesting body that I want to get my hands on and try out in the real world. It's an APS-C size sensor. They have 16 lenses that you can get for it right now. Some of it, even this lens is 16 to 50 OIS lens one last night. It's an F2 to F2.8 it won an award. Now, it does 15 frames a second. It has all different types of, of auto-focusing capabilities with so many different cross-type sensors. I believe it was over 150. It is a fast camera. It's accurate. The EVF is amazing, and it just seems to be an all-around pretty interesting camera. Now, a lot of people seem to like it. I really want to try it out in the real world to get my feel for it, but the 28 megapixels in the APS-C size sensor, they feel that the APS-C size sensor is the right place to be, especially when they optimize the lenses and the sensors together. They're going to get the best optical quality and the best image quality that they're going for. So you should go check this out on Samsung's site. Check out the NX1. Now we are in the Nikon booth and they have a fantastic setup where you can try out a bunch of their different cameras and photograph Cam back here who's from Brooklyn. They flew him in all the way from Brooklyn to do painting, which is a great background for anybody going around the PIX event to shoot photos with whatever camera they have or try out something like this, the Nikon D750, which won an award last night at the DP Review Award Ceremony, the best full frame system camera. That's a pretty good award to win, but this is a great booth, great setup. It's awesome to get around to photograph somebody doing some art in the background, and that is the Nikon booth. We are in the Olympus booth, and what is your name? Hey, I'm Eric. Eric, I got to ask you, what, uh, what's wrong with your arm? Oh, well, I actually have a form of selective gigantism, or what's called DSL arm. Basically, I'm an avid photographer and been using a DSLR for years, and uh, eventually it just outgrew my arm. So, uh, now, is this the only place that you have this affliction? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah, so, so what is the common cure for this DSLR arm? A lighter camera, a lighter DSLR, and the Olympus OMD is an excellent alternative. And uh, yeah, to my fellow DSLR users, careful. You could end up like me. An oddity to children, and I'm looked at at all, all times. I like getting looked at. It's okay, but yeah, definitely, you don't want your arm to stretch this far, because how do you even bring it up to your eye to shoot? So check out some of those Olympus cameras. They are much lighter, and they are darn good. And by darn good, I mean pretty good. And by pretty good, I mean I think people like them a lot. It's not hard enough. Karen, it's not hard enough. There you go. Oh, oh, now she's bringing the elbows. You could be a great hockey player. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right, right there. It's the common cure for DSLR arm and shoulder is coming to the Olympus booth and getting, oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, that's great. So we're now in line here with the third person in line, not the first, not the second, but the third. We got Majali. How long have you been here today? Since 11. Last night? Mm -hmm. 11 last night. Not this morning, 11 last night, but lucky for him, Samsung is allowing 300 people to ditch their DSLR in exchange for the NX500. What DSLR are you ditching? I'm ditching the uh, T1i. That's not a bad option to ditch. What uh, What are your hopes for the NX500? Well, I like the option that has like shooting 4K. I really wanted that feature. I think that like that's that next level that like I really want to start getting into more video because a lot of my clients are asking for more video type stuff too. So with that, I want to be able to provide that video with a 4K. That's exciting for me, and I wouldn't have been able to get it right away if it wasn't for this promotion. So, 
There you got it. That is a perfect promotion for people that are ditching their DSLR. Samsung is giving 300 people who are ditching their DSLR an NX500. That's pretty cool. Well, enjoy it when you get it. All right, Corinne, so you just ditched your DSLR. What did you get? I got a Samsung NX500 mirrorless camera, and I'm excited to play around with it. So what, what is the type of things that you like to shoot? I shoot mostly video, so having a compact 4K video appealed to me for sure. That is, uh, yeah, that's a great answer because it, it does the 4K, and that's that's great. What what type of videos do you like to make? Uh, I make news video mostly, documentary style. And so this is going to work pretty well. So you you happy that you uh, ditched your DSLR for this? Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of older DSLRs don't even have video functionality, so I've seen a lot of people ditching those. So now we're uh, all going forward. Sounds perfect. All right, enjoy your NX500. So you might think I'm sitting in my living room right now, but I'm not. I'm in the Creative Lounge and Marketplace here at PIX 2015 because the idea is to help people realize what they can do with their digital photos. Instead of just leaving them on the computer or in your camera, you can actually do something with them. You can have them printed into things like photo books, canvas, acrylic. Uh, you can have metal prints, wood prints. You can even print them onto pillows because I absolutely love pillows with photos. Who doesn't want a pillow with your kid's face on it? Like I like to say, if my brother and I each had a pillow, for when we were kids, we would have had massive pillow fights hitting each other with each other's face. Or maybe it would have been better that you could beat up the pillow and not each other and there's less injuries. That's a good thing. So you need to go to CelebratePhotos.com because over there, there's so many different resources to help you understand all of the different things you can do with your photos. There are so many different options today and they're unique. They're fun, they're awesome, they make great gifts, they make great memories, but really the idea here is to make sure that you take your digital files and you make your photos into something tangible that you can love and share with the rest of the world. So we are now in the Lens Baby booth, and you guys know Lens Baby. They've been around for 11 years, a little more than 11 years, so I'm being told now. But they have some interesting things. They've evolved tremendously over those 11 years. They have something that's reminiscent of the original one that they made. It's the Spark. It's really a beginner basic way to get into the Lens Baby universe. Spark, spark your interest. It's a fixed 5.6 lens. It's about 90 bucks. You can get it for Nikon, you can get it for Canon. It's a perfect thing to start with. Throw it in your bag, be creative. This is good. But if you want to step up to the next level, you have the Composer Pro, and that allows you to switch out different lenses. Not only switch out different lenses with the Composer Pro, but get different apertures. So now you don't have to, like the old ones. I remember the old ones. I had these drop in aperture things that I had to play with, but you don't have to do that anymore. It just clicks in and it turns, and you've got your different apertures. And something that they have now is a velvet lens. This one is called the Velvet 56. It's an f1.6 millimeter lens. It feels nothing like any other lens, baby. It's metal. It's sweet. It's velvety smooth. You have to check these out if you're looking to be really creative because it actually does macro. It's, it's super cool like that. Uh, there was one other thing that I wanted to hit on. What did I want to hit on, Stephen? We hit those, we hit those. Oh, and the fisheye. Then they came out with a circular fisheye, 185 degrees that you can see. There is a lot of stuff that Lens Baby does now from where they started 11 years ago with just one thing. It's evolved into real deal metal lenses, but still sparks your interest with something like this. So go check out some more Lens Baby. Hello, we have the, uh, the NX500 here that's about to get a new home. I want to see why. Uh, you know, what it's thinking right now. So, NX500, are, are you happy that somebody's going to ditch their DSLR and take you home? No, that's a great answer. I think we need a little more detail. You really, really excited and happy? Did you hear how excited and happy this NX500 is to go home? They're so happy that somebody's ditching their DSLR for this thing because it does 4K video. It takes great stills. That's what you want. So you're ditching your DSLR for something like this, and you're going to have a good home. Go to your home and be happy, NX500. Be happy. Be happy.